and a happy, happy Tuesday to you all. It's tea in the morning, and it's time for our About the Author segment, brought to you by Monday Creek Publishing. We are so thrilled to have local author with us, Terry Mash, who is the author of Cultured Girl. Good morning, and welcome to the studio. Good morning, and thank you for having me. It certainly is our pleasure. Now, if you could kind of give our listeners an overview of your book. My book was inspired by my grandmother, and it was a great opportunity to pay tribute to my family, and it introduces you to the special people in my life, especially my grandmother. I think she was the first person I had memory of. There was six in our family, three girls, three boys, and I was the youngest. I give credit to all of them, and uh, I wrote about all of them. Also, I wrote about my animals. I'm an animal lover and a nature lover, and it's little stories and poems that reflect that, and it gives you an overview of what life was like in the 60s in the Appalachia area where I grew up. Pretty much sums it up. Okay. Well, what made you decide to become an author and actually write the book? Well, I had always loved to draw and to write, but I sort of did that in secret and would tear it up because I thought it was a little bit childish. Yeah. And as you get older, you get a little wiser. So I started keeping my songs and my poems and some of my pictures. And I was working at the time and I shared them with a few people I worked with. They liked them. So I started keeping them and by accident, I ran into Gina McKnight of Monday Creek Publishing. My brother was doing some work for her, and she mentioned something about needing illustrators and about her profession. Sure. Well, it clicked in my brain, so I took over some of my pictures and some of my writings, my poems, and uh, she liked them. So we collaborated, and so that's where it all came about. That's awesome. Gina is an absolutely wonderful person, and she is very inspirational, too, I think. Very uplifting. Yes. You can go in there sad and you come out and you're on clouds. I mean, she really knows how to build you up and she's very sincere. If she likes something, she lets you know it. And if she doesn't, she lets you know that too. Yes, she does, but in an educational way. Correct. Yes. It's, It's been a very educational process. It's a back and forth process. It's not easy, and it takes time. You Mm -hmm. have to be patient. That's the way I felt anyway. Yes, absolutely. The old adage says patience is a virtue, and certainly there are times that test you to make sure that you have those patients. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, you are also the illustrator of the book. Yes, I did my own pictures. Like I said, I was always a closet artist, is what I call it, and would draw things and then tear them up or whatever. I thought it was childish. Always doodled. Yes. Whenever there was a pen by me, I doodled. And also, when I write, it seems like it's early in the morning. It's, um, I'll wake up at three or four, and a line or a thought will go through my head. Most of the time, I write it down, but if I don't, I lose it. Mm -hmm. And then as the day progresses, I add more to it, and that's the way I did the whole book and driving in a car that's when an idea might pop in my mind and I have to pull over and I can't find anything to write on so I write on a little napkin or what's ever <laughs> handy so that's the way they come about that's the start of it well you know I think creative people have many different outlets and I find myself in that same position as I'll be you know doing something really simple around the house and I'm like oh I've got this idea and I run to find something to write it down so I don't forget or I email it to myself so I don't forget where my train was taking me. I've never thought of emailing it to myself (laughs) but thank you for that. You're welcome. There's a new there's a new way now. There is and then it reminds me of what I was doing and where my thought process was so I can pick back up on it hopefully when I come to work. I wrote things down like I said, on a napkin, put it in my pocket. Always got a poem in my pocket. And I forget about it and wish my jeans and I've lost it. (laughs) I've done that several times. I hate when that happens. I do too. Yes. So your book is available to purchase. And if you could, Terry, tell people where your book is available if they're interested in getting themselves a copy and reading it. My book is available on Amazon. And also you can email me at culturedgirl 50 
1985 at gmail.com. And I thought it was at Little Professor in Athens, and I have to take them down more, but Little Professor has it too. Okay, that's just right down the street from us. All right. Yeah, most definitely. Anything else that you feel is important for people to know about your book, Cultured Girl? Well, a lot of the poems in the book are actually lyrics that I have music to. Some of them are. I'm a front porch picker. And in my mind, as I'm thinking of a poem, it comes to me in a cadence. And when you read that, sometimes I think you can feel that, feel that music with it. Absolutely. Well, I am excited to read your book myself because I'm also a little bit of a history buff. And so I think it would be interesting to read the perspective of the area in the 60s. It was a golden time. Yeah, I bet it was. I bet it most certainly was. Well, Terry Mash, it certainly is so nice to meet you. Author of Cultured Girl, which is a published book by Monday Creek Publishing. And again, if you could, Terry, before we wrap up our About the Author segment today, tell folks one more time where they can find your book for purchase. Amazon, and you can email me at culturedgirl55 at gmail.com and little professor. Perfect. Well, Terry, thank you so much for sharing some of the insights and inspiration for this book. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. I enjoyed it. Thank you. It was our pleasure. You've been listening to the Monday Creek Publishing About the Author segment. This is T. Until next time.